17-year-old Leslie McRae lived in Jacksonville, Florida in 1985. She was a student at the University of North Florida and aspired to be a model. At 2 in the morning on Christmas Eve, Leslie and her boyfriend was in her apartment sleeping. Her boyfriend woke up to a man standing next to the bed. He had a knife. The man then tied Leslie and her boyfriend up. The boyfriend was in panic as Leslie was then dragged away by the unknown man. He managed to free himself and called the police. They immediately started searching the area. Sadly, her body was found a few hours later along the side of the road. She had severe injuries to her head and chest. Investigators from a Jacksonville Sheriff's Office then collected evidence from the crime scene. This included DNA evidence that could be used later to help identify the unknown man. Investigators asked the public for anyone to come forward with useful information. They also had interviews with criminals in the area who have committed similar crimes. It led nowhere and the case went cold. A DNA profile for the suspect was created and submitted to CODIS, but no matches could be made. In 2019, Leslie's family reached out to the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office to look into the case again. So they did. Recently, in April of 2020, investigators again submitted the DNA profile and found that it matched a prisoner in the Michigan Corrections database. The prisoner is 59-year-old David Nelson Austin. He is serving a life sentence for unrelated crimes. Investigators found that he did live in Jacksonville at the time of the crime. After some more DNA testing, it was confirmed that he is responsible. A press conference was held on August 20, 2021, where it was announced that David has been indicted. Investigators are now working on getting David extradited from Michigan to Florida to face the charges against him. In August of 1992, a swimmer found the body of a baby in a Catawba River in York County, South Carolina. The baby was female and found wrapped in a bed sheet inside a plastic grocery bag. The child had been stabbed numerous times. An autopsy revealed that the baby passed away due to suffocation, not drowning or the stabbings. Investigators were unable to identify the baby, so she was named Baby Angel. It was determined as she was only a few hours old when her life was taken. Investigators found DNA on the bedsheet and collected it so it could be used later. They did not get any leads, so the case went cold. In October 2020, detectives re-examined the case and submitted the DNA from the bedsheet to the York County Forensic Lab for testing. The results came back and showed that the DNA belonged to 48-year-old Stacy Michelle costner rabin she is the mom of baby Angel. In August of 2021, Stacy was arrested at her home in Rock Hill, South Carolina, and she was not very happy, as you can see. She did not deny that the baby was hers. Investigators have not been able to find the child's father and are uncertain that he is still alive. York County Sheriff Kevin Tolson had us to say, I am very thankful for the hard work of our detectives and DNA analysts. Their dedication has led to the closure of a case that has haunted our community for years. 18-year-old Caitlin Arquette lived in Albuquerque, New Mexico in 1989. She graduated from high school on June 14. Caitlin had been accepted to the University of New Mexico. Her aspirations were to attend medical school one day. Directly after graduation, she moved into an apartment with her boyfriend, Tsang Niop Wen. He was 8 years older than her, but she told her parents that he was only 4 years older so they would not worry. Tsang took part in a lot of criminal activities and belonged to a Vietnamese gang. Six weeks after moving in together, Caitlin told her mom, Lois Duncan, that she and Tsang had been having problems and they were constantly arguing. Caitlin planned to break up with him. On July 16, she was heading to her mom's house at 11 pm in her car. She reached an intersection. Another car then pulled up next to her and one of the passengers shot her twice in the head. It was just before midnight that Caitlin's family learned that she was in the emergency room. They rightfully believed that she had been in a car accident. It was only when they arrived at the hospital that they were told that she had been shot. 
Investigators went to our apartment to see what they could find. They found Zhang. He claimed to be unaware of the shooting and said he was out of friends all night. Sadly, Caitlin passed away from injuries 24 hours later. In 1990, investigators announced that Caitlin had been a victim of a random act of violence. Her family did not believe this was the case. Her family believed that Caitlin knew too much about Zhang's criminal activities and the gang members were scared that she would go to the police. Her family also discovered that phone calls were made from Caitlin's apartment at virtually the same time her life was taken. This made it seem that Zhang was lying when he said he was out of friends that evening. Investigators refused to believe that Zhang or his gang was involved and are not investigated. Also in 1990, an informant led investigators to Robert Garcia. He was interrogated for two hours. Robert said at the evening he was in a car with Dennis Martinez, Juvenile Escobedo and Miguel Garcia. He also said that Miguel Garcia was the one that shot Caitlin. All of the men were arrested, but the case soon fell apart when it was discovered that Robert Garcia was in prison that night. Caitlin's family then decided to hire a private investigator. He found that a man named Paul Apodaca was found standing next to Caitlin's car when police arrived on the scene. He had an extensive criminal history, but was somehow never questioned during the initial investigation. In July of 2021, when he was questioned, he confessed. He also confessed to taking the lives of two other women. I will make a separate video on other women. Caitlin's family is relieved, but critical of the Albuquerque police for never questioning Apodaca and letting him walk away from the crime scene.